Don't make the same mistake we did when painting your entry door. This one we painted well. And this one, not so well. Today we're going to share why that is and what we learned painting our entry doors. For some context, the entry door on our front elevation is a pre-finished door that was graciously provided and installed by Clope. And man, does it look good. However, on our debt-free budget, we could not afford to match that door on our side and back entrances. So we went to our local big orange box store and picked up two primed craftsman style doors for the low, low price of $450 each with a jam extension kit. Well, that was an adventure, but we got them home. Keyword there is primed. The paint on both the interior and exterior is not included. That is on the end buyer to do themselves. Neither of us had any experience painting a door, especially when it had to look good and hold up to weather. But before we get into painting, there's some carpentry that had to happen. I mentioned the jam extension kit that we had to buy. For those unfamiliar, this is a door jam, the side here, and there's two typical sizes for doors, four and nine sixteenths and six and nine sixteenths jams. I learned that at the big box stores, they really only carry the four and nine sixteenths, and that's meant for a two by four framed wall. You can order two by six doors, but it's a special order item and it's double the price of the two by four, even including the jam extension kit. So they make these kits that just extend the jam out two inches exactly to match the width of your two by six wall. To install this jam extension kit, I first had to carefully pry this exterior brick mold off and I separated the door from the frame just to make working easier. The metal sill extension slid in super easy and then it was onto the wooden perimeter. I cut the pieces down to length, prime the end so they don't absorb water, and then use my quick adjust Craig clamps to hold it to the door frame while I drove three inch GRK trim screws down through the whole perimeter. Then I screwed the brick mold back together, placed it back on the frame where it was, and nailed around the whole perimeter with 16 gauge finish nails. Today we are working on our last two entry doors for our current structure, and this one we are getting ready to paint. At this point in time, we have not invested in a spray painter for any of our painting, even though we know we're gonna be doing a ton of painting for this house whenever we get it closer to being finished. Um, so we've just been using rollers and brushes, and that's what we did on the first one. Honestly, we're not crazy about the finish. I'll show you some of that. The door that Alex is installing, I painted standing up. This works really well for ergonomics, but but you do get some paint dripping and it's not necessarily ideal. On the last door I painted, I realized that I should have started with the white and then painted the color that was on the exterior. There's a lot more white paint than there is the black paint that I'm painting on the exterior. So it makes sense to start with that first. Time to tape it up. When you're taping the windows, you don't have to be exact. Leave some excess at the corners and then use a razor blade to score the tape and peel it back. Before I finish taping off the rest of the door, I'm gonna give the top side a light sand. I'm also gonna do it on the other side as well. This is something that's recommended by the manufacturer's instructions, but we didn't do it on the first door and it kind of has a weird texture. So I'm curious to see if sanding this will help. A lot of other people said that you should be sanding in between coats. We didn't do that last time. So I may try that here, but I'm also a little bit impatient. So I'm not sure I'm actually gonna do that. The first round of sanding is done and I will say the door is a lot smoother. I think this might've been part of our issue on that first door. I'm going to see how it turns out after the first coat of paint and I might end up sanding after that first coat to get the nice smooth finish. I might also try just using a brush on this side to see how it turns out. Last time I used a brush and a roller, but let's just experiment and see what happens. Fast forward a few weeks in the door saga and we have learned a couple things about entry doors, none of which we've gotten on camera, but now we feel like we know what we're doing a little bit, so we are good to share. First thing is we successfully painted and installed this entry door. We're pretty happy with how it turned out, except for one thing, and that's the paint finish. We used a flat paint and we brushed and rolled it on and it didn't quite turn out how we liked it. A simple Google search would have told us not to use flat paint on a door, but we missed that when I was picking the paint out and you can see how easily it, it holds dirt and marks. So what you should use is either a satin or a semi-gloss. And so that is the lesson learned that we're implementing on the next door. Overall though, the install of this went pretty well. Putting one of these in is a bit of a trial and error process, getting all the shims right and all the screws just to the right tightness so the thing opens and closes correctly. And here I present the next door, our second learning experience. And this one though, we are not going to be brushing and rolling. 
we are going to be spray painting it and not out of the can either. One of my friends let me borrow his airless paint sprayer and as you can see, we've protected our garage doors and basically converted half our garage into a paint booth. This bare marquee is the paint that we used on the first door that we really didn't like how it turned out. We switched to this bare premium urethane alkyd enamel. That's a semi-gloss finish. This was a matte finish. And I think we're really gonna like how this turns out much, much better. And I've already done one trial run using this with the spray painter on the white side of the door and I really liked how it turned out. I have the door flipped over so the lighting isn't fantastic, but this is a much smoother and more even surface than the flat paint was. I did the jam with this white spray paint too and it also turned out really, really nice. So now we need to do the black side of this door. I've already masked off the windows and I need to sand and clean the surface of this door to prepare it for paint. I'll be using a 340 grit sandpaper on my cordless oscillating sander and then I'll wipe with a damp rag to remove any of that dust. As always, if you're ever doing any sanding, make sure you got your PP on, N95 respirator and safety glasses. If you want something a little bit more stylish than your normal boring safety glasses, these are called Stoggles. We've worked with them a little bit and we really like their, their glasses. So if you're interested in a pair, check out the link in the description. If you don't wipe that dust off, your paint is not gonna stick. So I just learned how to use this sprayer last night just by following the quick start guide. So I'm basically an expert and I'm here to teach you now. I was kind of intimidated by airless sprayers and just professional grade spray painting in general um, just because I hadn't tried it before or learned how to do it. But after diving in last night, it doesn't seem really that bad at all actually. It was a lot more simple than I thought. It's pretty easy. You just need two buckets, a water bucket and a waste pail bucket that's gonna allow you to prime the pump, separate these two hoses, put them in their respective buckets. This big one's our suction line, so it's gonna be sucking out that water. There's two positions for this, spray is down, prime is up. There's a pressure knob, which you, which you turn to the start position, which is labeled on there. And then when you turn this on, this will prime, it'll suck water through here and just pump it right out here. It just gets water up into this valve. Reference my quick start guide to make sure that I didn't just tell you something wrong and I think that's right, yep. Now that we're primed with water, we can set this in our paint. Just goes right in the gallon. Same deal, turn on and wait till we see a little bit of paint coming out this drain tube and then we know that we are primed to the valve. And now we gotta prime the gun that in our spray position, press our trigger and wait till we get black coming out of this gun. Oh, I see it starting. There we go. All right, we got paint. One of the things that kind of confused me and I wasn't sure if things weren't working properly or what, but this doesn't run continuously. I thought that it ran all the time, but it just runs enough to get you up the pressure and then it stops until you squeeze the trigger again, release pressure, and then it's got to start again. Now I'm ready to spray. I'm going to use that scrap cardboard to do just a quick test to make sure that the pattern coming out of the gun is nice and even and adjust my pressure as needed if not. And then I should be able to put a light coat on the door. I think two coats will do it, but I am doing black on white, which is the biggest contrast you can do, so I might need to do three. I was aiming for steady, slow movement, keeping the gun at the same angle relative to the door throughout each spray, and about a 50% overlap between passes. And it's really that quick. That whole video was four minutes and 17 seconds from me warming it up on the cardboard to 
being done the first coat. Can hardly beat that with a roller and a brush, and this looks a whole lot better, I can promise you that. It's nice and even, easy, easy, easy. Fast forward a couple hours, we are dry to the touch, and I think we're ready for our second coat. Had a couple spots here that did have kind of a glob of paint come out of the gun, and I kind of touched them up, so I gotta sand that down just a hair before I recoat that. And then, unfortunately, I got some spray up underneath this door. I put this little skirt of tape along the edges, but I didn't realize that there was still a gap between the door and the cardboard. And so when I was spraying like the sides, the paint kind of bounced up off the cardboard and then went up underneath the door. So I'm gonna have to probably spray another coat of white on the bottom of this anyway. So that's kind of a bummer, but that's a life lesson learned the hard way. Now I pray that no dust or anything lands on this thing and creates an issue that actually worked out well. I don't see any major defects in that second coat. Let's cross our fingers it stays that way while it's drying. The setup and cleanup of this sprayer took longer than actually using it. Cleanup was pretty easy, however. They had a special attachment for the hose that you could hook right onto that suction line and just use your hose water pressure to clean out the valve and the return line. Turning the pump on gives it a little bit of extra boost. And then you can clean out the gun. There's quite a bit of paint in the hose left and if you just start spraying that into the can, you can actually save most of it. Once you see it's coming out a bit diluted with water, you know it's time to go right into the bucket. And finally, disconnect and disassemble the gun and clean it out by hand in the bucket. So that's our whole story on painting. We didn't really get much footage of the actual install, however, because it was getting cold by the time we were ready to put these in, and we just wanted to get them in. But here is the brief rundown on what we actually did for that. We started with our rough opening, of course. It was already liquid flash from when we did the whole perimeter of the foundation. Then we took a sloped sill pan, it's called Sure Sill. We set that in the rough opening, embedded with OSI Quad Max caulk, and then flashed that to the rough opening as well with zip tape. Then we took our door from the outside and set it into the rough opening until the brick mold contacted our exterior wall. Then from the inside, put the level up against my hinge jam, shimmed this side until everything was straight and plumb, and then put screws in just under each shim. Did the same thing on the other side, made sure my reveal around the door was nice and consistent, and then finally cut my shims off flush and filled with some low expansion foam. To finish the outside up, I nailed and taped this piece of metal head flashing on, zip taped that to the wall, then ran a bead of OSI Quad Max caulk down each jam. This is exteriorated caulk, it's really good stuff. For hardware, we have this awesome thumbprint reader deadbolt. Not cheap, but totally worth it and a Schlage Century handle. We have links to these in the description if you wanna see pricing and more details. So hopefully you picked up a couple things from this if you're painting your exterior doors. Remember three things, don't use flat paint, use a spray painter, and read the directions.